Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another prep hour with Steve. Just waiting for everything to load up on the various streams. I believe we are live now. So um, type in a hello if you're receiving me. People are coming on. Hello to Sheena. And uh, just type in your location, everyone. Type in your location where you are right now. Um, Sarah in London. Yep. Uh, it's July 15 right now, uh, where I am in Brisbane, the east coast of Australia. It's just gone 5 p.m. I'll get everyone to type in their location and also type in your profession, please. Type in your profession as well. Hello to um, Imran in Pakistan, Gith in Kerala, and Sheena also in Kerala. We have Florette in the UK in Newcastle upon Tyne, Christine in London. Great to see lots of people here. Just checking out a few more places, everyone. Hello to Betty Moll in Saudi Arabia. I'll just set up one of my things here before we go any further, everyone. Bear with me. In Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia. All right. Hello to Sarah. Hello, Verbin. Just making sure I can get all your comments, everyone. Hello in Singapore. So it's a specialist nurse in medicine. Yeah, we've got a UK nurse. That's excellent. What else have we got today? Because we're going to cover a few different professions, everyone, today. So I can see we've got some nurses, we've got some doctors. Wonderful. Any other professions that we have here today? Just type it in now. A UK nurse. That's excellent. What else? We've got Marita in Sri Lanka. That's great. Dr. Long ago in Sydney. Yep. Cardiac nurse, hello to Ying, a dentist um, there in Sydney. That's terrific. Um, we have Saparia, a pharmacist, wonderful. Um, Marita, also a pharmacist, good to know. We're going to cover a couple of pharmacy tasks. We've got Tasneem, a physiotherapist. We'll also look at a couple of physiotherapy examples today. So that's really good that you're here. We have a say, psychiatrist, so that comes under medical doctor there, Omnia. Hello to Bangalore. All right, people are from all over the world. That is wonderful. All right, everyone. Well, look, I'm just going to begin with a little bit of a warm-up activity. So let's start with that. Now, this is on the OET online Facebook page that you can see there, everyone. And I like to begin with these. So this isn't related to writing, but let's just do a little bit of um, our idiom of the week practice. So I've got a couple of things here we're going to look at. Um, as, as you know, we do our idiom of the week series on our Facebook page and we're working through the body parts, everyone. And right now we're up to the head. We've got a series of idioms related to the head, the head being such a vital body part. Uh, there are many idioms associated with the head. So let's just do our warm up activity. Um, so we've got an expression here where it's, um, it's, it's on your head or it's on his head or 
it's on her head. So what does that actually mean, everyone? Um, well, let's look at a dialogue. The patient says, doctor, if anything happens to me, it's on your head. It's on your head. The doctor says confidently, don't worry. It's a simple procedure with a very high success rate. Okay, so what does that mean, everyone, that expression? It's on your head. Who wants to have a go at that? Type in what you think it means, everyone. It's on your head. On top of your head, everyone. What does that mean? Thanks, Ajinda. You will be responsible. Yes, Chetna got that as well. Your responsibility. Yes, exactly, everyone. Yeah, everyone's getting that. Well done. Well done. That's the exact meaning. To have sole responsibility for something. It's a lot of pressure as health professionals. You people are under a lot of pressure. You have a lot of responsibility. All right. Let's continue with the next one. Just move that back. All right, we'll do the next one. I just moved that screen. Okay, next one, to be head over heels in love, everyone. If you're head over heels in love, so we've got the body part head and then we've got the heels, head over heels. It's an interesting expression, to be head over heels in love. Friend one says, Whenever I see him, my heart goes a million miles an hour. Friend two says, sounds like you're head over heels in love with him. Friend one says, is it that obvious? Friend two, afraid so. Okay, what does that mean to be head over heels in love, everyone? Ooh, deeply in love. <laughs> Hygiene says head to toe in love. I haven't heard of that one before. Yes, but completely in love. Completely in love. Overwhelmed. Nice choice of word, Anam. Overwhelmed with love. That's it. Samel writes, hope you are well. I passed my OET on June 13 and you watched your videos. Most welcome, Samel. Glad we could help you. So, yes, completely in love, everyone. So there it is. To be or to be madly in love. Okay, last one. To be hard headed. And you might like this image of this sheep. To be hard headed. Let's see what that means. I tried to tell the boss it was a bad idea, but he wouldn't listen. Staff to, I'm not surprised he's so hard headed. What does hard headed mean? Ooh, and from the last one, Muhammad put in a great word, infatuated. Good vocabulary. Uh, someone put in hot-headed. No, hard-headed and hot-headed is a little different. Hot-headed is you've got a quick temper, but that's not the meaning of hard-headed. John's wrote difficult. No, doesn't mean difficult. Aha, nada got it. Stubborn. Yeah, a lot of people coming in with stubborn. Sarah got it, Omne got it to be very stubborn. All right. There's a lot of stubborn people in this world, aren't there? <laughs> Recalcitrant. No, that's a different meaning there. Um, but I get your point. That's when you won't follow advice. But we use, Zachary, we use that more for children, that word. Unsentimental, that's part of it as well, Sonia. Good choice of word. Only listens to himself, yes. Perhaps not an easy person. Single-minded, yes, that's it. To not change your mind easily, to be inflexible. All right, great. That's our little warm-up activity, everyone. So keep, remember those idioms of the week you can see on our Facebook page, OET Online Facebook page, so do check that out. 
Um, we release them every week. Now we're going to talk about writing everyone. I'll bring up a new share. So here's our page, everyone. We haven't done a writing class for a while. So for the past six weeks or so, we've been focusing on reading and listening. We've been looking at the OET Center set three tasks. So now we're going to go to a new chapter, everyone. Are you looking forward to a little bit of writing correction today, everyone? Uh, we're going to focus on sentence level grammar. We'll look at some introductions, some sentences within the body paragraphs, and we'll look at conclusions. All right, so this is very sentence level today. Uh, not so much analyzing case notes and things like that. Um, really just looking at sentence level um, language. And remember, you are doing an English language test. So while there are many elements um, that are needed to, to meet the OET writing assessment criteria, a very, very important one and a very challenging one, as I'm sure you'll agree, is language use. Okay. And I'm right, sentence structure is important. Absolutely. Very, very important. Okay. Let's begin, everyone. And uh, lots of input, and I'll try to respond to your comments. So we're going to start with introductions, and we're going to look at um, five different professions today. Uh, so I hope we've covered your profession. Uh, but if not, don't worry, you'll get a lot of benefit because these apply across the board. Now, the introduction is a hard is a hard sentence to write, isn't it? It's, it's a very important sentence. We'll just try to get the right size there. There we are. We're going to begin with medicine, everyone. Medicine. I'm just set up my screen so it works well. Can everyone see that clearly? Just make sure I can see everyone's comments. That's looking very good. I hope you've got a nice big screen so you can see that. Okay, I think I'm ready to go, everyone. So let's look at the first one. Dear Mr. Smart. So this is, a, oh, sorry, medicine. Dear Dr. Smythe. And it says here, re Mrs. Eliza Mack, and we've got a date of birth, 2310-1970. Okay, let's read this, shall we? I'm writing to request urgent assessment for Mrs. Miro. A, ooh, that should say it's got a different name. Let's just change that name there. I'm writing to request an urgent assessment for Mrs. Mack, a mother of three children, who has recently been diagnosed with the right breast cancer. Now that's quite a good sentence, everyone. And there's only a very minor error. Can you see what it is? I'm writing to request urgent assessment uh, for Mrs. Mack, a mother of three children who has recently been diagnosed with the right breast cancer. Uh, Rahul says, isn't it better to start with thank you? You could um, start, you could do that. You could say, thank you for accepting Mrs. Mack for urgent assessment. Absolutely. There's only one little error here. And urgent says Frankie. Um, well, assessment's uncountable, but Frankie, we could put an. That's optional, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Honey's got it. Um, no, I like has re someone, Sarita wrote, was diagnosed, but no, has recently been diagnosed is good, everyone, because this is a recent diagnosis. So that's a good sentence. You could put was, but by using present perfect, you're indicating that this occurred recently. So has been is good here. The issue is, and some people are pointing it, that is wrong, isn't it, everyone? Who was recently diagnosed with right breast cancer. 
remove the. Why? Because it's a medical condition. For medical conditions, we don't say the cancer or the diabetes. So rule number one, um, for medical conditions, you do not need to use the definite article. Even though you're distinguishing the side, the location, simply with right breast cancer. Okay, so this was actually a very good introduction with just one minor error, but it has a good focus. We know why um, we, we've got a reason for referral and urgent assessment. Um, we know a little bit about Mrs. Mack, a mother of three children. Uh, and we also know that um, very importantly for me here, we also know that it's recently been diagnosed. So that recency tells us a bit of the, the time reference and we know the diagnosis. Now, let me ask you all a question. A mother of three children, is that essential information? Is that connect to the right breast cancer? Or would you call that useful information? Do we need to put this detail, everyone? What do you think? A mother of three children, is that necessary? Have a think about that. Why did the writer decide to add this additional information? Does it help? Gigi says no, yep. It doesn't help probably if this is to a surgeon, it doesn't help the surgeon, it's non-essential. But why is it there? It's there for background, everyone. It's the background. So just remember that putting a little bit of contextual detail doesn't help with the diagnosis or the treatment, but it does pro provide a little bit of context there. Okay, she's a mother of three children. So just background, that's all. Um, I'm in favor of putting a little bit of context um, where it's appropriate into the introduction. And as Christine says, there's a bit of a link. We can see some link there, the fact that she is a mother of three children. Okay, so there is a link. Um, Obek Okeke wants to say, what about diagnosed of right breast cancer? No. For that phrase, Okeke, I would say, who has a diagnosis of. But when you use the verb diagnosed, we don't use of. We're going to say diagnosed with. So remember that other one, everyone. We could say a who has a diagnosis of something, something, something. So that's how you use that phrase. But we're using the verb, everyone. All right, let's go to the next one, everyone. Physiotherapy. I know we have some physiotherapists here. Let's have a look. Dear Mrs. Smart, re Thomas Smith. We've got a date of birth. Um, I'm writing refer Thomas, refer Thomas for your care. He is a five-year-old boy who has been diagnosed with cerebral palsy since eight months old. Ooh, a few mistakes there. And is discharged from hospital today after Achilles tendon release on this particular date. Okay, we've got a few mistakes here, everyone. Any suggestions? While I'm waiting, Florette says, for urgent requests, we need to put the purpose of our request. I think it's always a good idea to try to make that purpose clear, Florette. Okay, I hope everyone can see that screen clearly. Yes, yeah, since is a bit of a problem in your care, exactly. Under your care, good try, let's try. I'm writing to refer Thomas, yeah, not for your care. I'm writing to refer Thomas, I would say into. I'm writing to refer Thomas into your care. That four doesn't really work for us into your care. Otherwise, it's okay, you can use a short style. 
is a five-year-old boy who has been diagnosed with. Now, we've got a problem here. Let's see if we can fix it. Now, first thing, everyone, medical conditions, do we need a capital? I'd say we don't. So he is a five-year-old boy who has been diagnosed with, so we put the article there. He's a five-year-old boy who's been diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Put lowercase, everyone. For medical conditions, you don't need to capitalize them unless, yeah, Kariz got it, unless um, it's named after someone. Um, like Alzheimer's disease or Hashimoto's syndrome, or if you say Bell's palsy, if it's named after somebody, uh, you can use capitals. But if not, um, use lowercase. Who um, now he who has been um, since we've got to fix this up, everyone. Since. Mm, I would say since the age of eight months, that's a bit funny. So since the age of eight months, that makes it a little bit better or maybe even better since I'll say it a bit better since he was eight months of age, probably a little bit better. Although perhaps this doesn't really belong in the introduction. Since he was eight months old, not too bad, Baba Jide. Okay. And is, thank you, Frankie. And we don't need he. And is, so he's a five-year-old boy who's been diagnosed with cerebral, cerebral palsy since he was eight months old and is being, let's use that, and is being discharged from a hospital today after... Now we got Achilles tendon. How can we fix that, everyone? Quite a few mistakes in this one. After, we've got to use capitals here, don't we? After, and I'm going to put an article after a right Achilles tendon release. After a right Achilles tendon release. We might put an apostrophe there. Um, now, Achilles is the name of a god. So this Achilles, you know, your Achilles tendon, it's named after somebody. So after a right Achilles tendon release. Okay, we fix that grammatically. Uh, okay. Now, the only other thing you might, the only query I would have, do we need to put this diagnosis here? Um, um, I would actually rephrase this a little bit. I'll give you another option, everyone, just so you know. That sort of fixes it up, but we could be a bit shorter. And we could say he's a five-year-old boy, a five-year-old boy, and I would just put with cere cerebral palsy. And I wouldn't put that detail because it doesn't seem relevant in the physiotherapy case initially. I think it's too much information. And I would just say with cerebral palsy, who is being discharged from a hospital today after a right Achilles tendon release, because this really is the main idea. Do our physiotherapists agree? This person put probably more detail than required. So I would actually rephrase that one, everyone. All right, let's continue on. Now, I know we have some pharmacists here. Welcome to, oh, no, nurses next. Dear Director, re Mrs. Robert Roach. Mr. Robert Roach, we got a date of birth. I'm writing to refer Mr. Roach. Now, this one, look, at, look for commas, everyone. Look for commas here. I'm writing to refer Mr. Roach. 70-year-old Aboriginal man who was admitted in hospital. Okay, I'm going to highlight a few things. And you tell me what's wrong. Something there. I think we don't need this one. Something there. Something happening there. 
for quite a lot of errors in this introduction. While I'm waiting for that, Mirage says, how do we differentiate between letter demanding urgent assessment and an emergency letter? How do we plan the letter after intro for both these? Well, that's a probably, a, that's a lesson in itself, Mirage. I'd go back and look at some of the previous prep hour series um, to get an answer for that one. Okay, let's, yes, thank you, Christine. So I'm going to start correcting some of these. So remember the admitted to hospital. We don't admit in, we admit to. That's your collocation. You've got to, the phrasal verb, admit to, who is admitted to hospital. Um, what else have we got? A7, yeah, so we're going to need a comma here. Thank you, Nevchi. A 70-year-old Aboriginal man. Check the dates, everyone. Is he 70? We've got 1950 here. Is he 70? So we're going to use a definite article because of the noun man, a 70-year-old man. And then I'm going to remove that comma because this is a, we've got the comma after Mr. Roach and now we're defining him, a 70-year-old man who was admitted to hospital. So we do not need a comma there because we're defining who he is. It's not additional information. It's who he is, who was admitted to hospital on this date following. Ah, thank you, Raja. Um, following up ah, because accident is accountable now. Remember, these articles will not be in the case notes following a motor vehicle accident. He's due to be, the last one's easy, isn't it? He's due to be, thank you, Raju, again, discharged. That's the past participle, discharged today into your care. Otherwise, quite a good one. A lot of information there. That's well written. All right, now I'm going to correct you. 1950, but this is set in September. But we are only in, according to this one, we're in June. So I would say he's not 70 yet. He's not 70 yet. Doesn't that mean he's 69 and 10 months, everyone? To be precise, he doesn't turn 70 until September. And according to these case notes, we're in June. So he's three months short. He's actually 69 and nine months. So don't only look at the year, also look at the month. Okay, continue. Dentists, I believe we have some dentists here. Dear Dr. Hope, re Maria Jabor, we've got a date of birth. I'm writing to refer Mrs. Jabor, a regular patient, little bit of a problem there from this practice who requires management by an ENT surgeon. I have a question. Can, why does Mr. Why does Mrs. Jabor require management? Does anyone know? Why does Mrs. Jabor require management? Thanks, Sabini. Yes, you need that attention to detail exactly. That's what you need. Of this practice, says Diana. Mm, yeah, of this, yeah. Um, a regular patient. I wouldn't probably use of. Thanks, Cindy. So it's not specific. You could put of, of this practice. Probably I prefer at, at, because at isn't as specific as in or on. It's general. So I would say here a regular patient at this practice who requires management, but but this one is not too good. It's um, weak, weak purpose. It's vague, we don't know why. So in the, uh, according to the OET criteria, they're gonna lose marks here because the purpose is unclear, isn't it? The purpose, um, um, the purpose is unclear. Rahul writes, 
of my practice. Isn't it correct too? Yeah, a regular patient of my practice. Yep. I wouldn't call, I wouldn't mark that as wrong. I would consider that acceptable. So you've got that option. I think that's a bit more standard. Welcome to Sudanese there. Hello. All right. So we've done that one. So it's a weak purpose. Needed to say why. Why, why does he need management? We don't know. So that ENT surgeon will be scratching the head. What do I have to do? I'll have to read more to find out. So one of the OET criteria says that the for purpose, the reason for writing should be immediately apparent, and it's not in that dentistry task. So there, you would lose marks there. Yep, incomplete, that's right. Um, let's go to the next one, the pharmacy one. Dear Dr. Watson, read Victor Naudi. Uh, I'm writing to discuss about an alternative. Now, we've got a problem here, everyone. You can tell me what it is. I'm writing to discuss about an alternative medication option for Mr. Naudi, who came to our practice with prescription. There's something wrong there for Diabex SR500 following. Something's happening here, too, following recent appointment with you. It's actually a pretty well-written introduction but there's a few issues here we've got a few issues can you identify what they are to discuss now think about the verb discuss yeah to discuss not about thanks Baba yes you could use regarding but I'm going to fix this one the, the thing about discuss we discuss something so just remember that you discuss something so what are we discussing everyone well we're discussing an alternative medication option so no preposition required that's right christine all right i'm writing to discuss an alternative medication option for mr naudi now for this one I would actually add a comma because this is additional information to, uh, to discuss an alternative medication of, for Mr. Naudi. And uh, now this is not defining him. This is extra information. So I would prefer a comma here, um, uh, an alternative medication option for Mr. Naudi who came to our pharmacy with the prescription Yes, Sheena, but I'm going to say with a prescription because it's the first time to mention it. So I would use the indefinite article with a prescription for Diabex SR following and bomithi has got it, well done, and Frankie following a recent appointment. So... This is not, this is actually a good introduction, but it's just let down by just a few little errors, as you can see, which we fix there, everyone. Once we fix them, it just becomes a lot better, doesn't it? Just becomes a lot better. So my advice, everyone, really work on attention to detail with those introductions. Ideally, you don't want to make any mistakes in your introductions. Your introduction should be error-free, and that just requires plenty of practice. Now, I've just put, because I think introductions can be tricky, I've given a model introduction here just to give you some guidelines. So let's look at this one. Dear Dr. Re Andrew Smith, I'm writing to refer Andrew, use first name for children. I'm writing to refer Andrew, a two-month-old boy who has recently been diagnosed with infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, and we've just put the acronym in brackets. Maybe that will be used later in the letter, for which he requires urgent management and a surgical intervention. Now, that's a very good introduction. Why is it? Well, we know that the features, the purpose of writing is immediately apparent. So remember this phrase. This is what your goal is. The purpose of the writing needs to be immediately apparent. And it is. 
We know who the patient is. We also know that their gender. Uh, we know the current situation through that verb recently. So we know when the diagnosis occurred. So that's very good. Um, and we know the diagnosis. And we also know, very important, what action is required on, on part of the reader. So people receiving referral letters, they want to know what action they need to do because you're giving them a job and they know, okay, it's urgent management and surgical intervention. So that's a well-organized introduction, everyone. Probably get your three points for purpose. So bear that in mind um, when you're writing your introductions. Now let's move on. We've got to do some body paragraph errors, everyone. Let's look at this. Medicine. In terms of his medical history, he has had hypothyroidism, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and COPD, for which he has been taking several medications. Now, I've just got a problem with this, everyone. I want you to tell me what's wrong. There's a problem with the verb tense. He has had hypothyroidism, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and COPD. What is wrong there? What is wrong? Um, while I'm waiting for your response, Baba, um, I would say that article was optional, but because it was a type of intervention, it should be has, shouldn't it, my? Yeah, it should be present tense. Well, if you put has had, it means the implied meaning is he probably doesn't have it now. He may have it in the future. It we unless you put a time frame, the duration, the meaning changes. So someone's tried to use present perfect, but it affects meaning because there's no time reference, and it's not a recent condition. It's an ongoing something that occurred in the past. Present perfect is wrong here. Just use simple present. Yes, my, it means he's well now, which is not the case for these conditions. So he has um, these conditions. Otherwise, it's quite good. It's a little bit, you know, questionable whether all these things are necessary, but otherwise it's quite well written. Um, but there's a little problem I have. It's too much information. I'll mention this one. Now, we can take medication. Can we take an inhaler? Can we take an inhaler? I know we can take medication, but can we take an inhaler? Not really. We use an inhaler. So it's a little bit awkward there. So for which he's been taking this medication and, you know, we might say using for balance, right? We could add this. But honestly, I feel this right. It's just put a little bit too much information and you've got a question was all of that information really necessary perhaps the writer should have been a little bit more selective in what information is included okay okay we can't say has been taken uh there florette we need the ing has been taking that's our progressive form. All right, um, let's keep going. Physiotherapy. Post-surgery, bed exercises were initiated, lovely, which includes, now here they all are, everyone, quadriceps stretching, gradual ankle joint stretching, and upper limb stretching. So there's these, I'll highlight them. What's wrong, everyone? These aren't correct. What's wrong? Salish, that sounds good. What's wrong here? Which included quadriceps stretching. Uh, no, you don't include, included is okay. We're giving past tense here.
No S, yes. No S. That's the issue here. We don't know, not an apostrophe. So this rule, everyone, is what we call an attributive noun. And the first noun acts as an adjective. Because it's acting as an adjective, we can't use plural form. So just drop it. Quadricep stretching, gradual ankle joint stretching, and upper limb stretching. A little bit repetitive there, I suppose, repeating the word um, stretching. But the, the main issue here is for, remember this, for attributive nouns, um, don't pluralize the first noun. Do not use plural form. Just remember that one. That's important. Uh, okay. Next one, nursing. Socially, Mr. Roach lives alone. Uh, um, mm, but it's, oh, honey writes quadricep. Yeah, not plural. That's right. Um, socially, Mr. Roach lives alone in an Aboriginal community. Let's do this one. And has no family or relatives available. He ha uh, here's a verb tense error, everyone. He has been received benefit from the government. A few mistakes there, everyone. Hmm. We have two quadriceps exactly. So singular, quadricep, two quadriceps. Okay. Um, you could say that, but here I'm going to say an. We know that because it's before a vowel. An Aboriginal community, thank you, has been receiving, thank you, Mai. He has been receiving, use a progressive form. Someone's getting mixed up between passive and active. Okay. What about relatives available? That sounds a bit funny, doesn't it? Relatives available. He has no family or relatives available, maybe to support him. Just a bit vague there. So we'll just make it a bit clearer. He has been receiving, and I would pluralize this, everyone. I think alone is good, Osgan. I think alone is good because that means he needs care. And the benefits are regular. So I would add that. All right, let's keep going, everyone. Dentistry for our dentists, everyone. Unfortunately, on today's checkup appointment, that's good. Her condition was, oh, there's a problem there. Her condition was deteriorated. And an, and an acute bacterial infection, it's well written, has developed, that's good, associated with fever, tenderness, and pus oozing out ooh, of the duct orifice. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. But just let down by a couple of errors, everyone. Unfortunately, on today's checkup appointment, her dental condition, thank you, Cindy, so has deteriorated. Don't use was deteriorated because the deterioration occurs over time. That's why. So um, when for verbs which indicate an action over a period of time, use your perfect tense. You could also say, if you wanted to, you could say, is deteriorating. That would be an option as well. All right. Now, yes, Cindisa points out oozing. So it's really, really nicely written, everyone. But look, oozing out. Oozing out is very descriptive. 
It's emphatic, oozing. It's too descriptive. Can you give me a better dentist if you're here? There's a duct orifice. Instead of oozing, what's a more professional word? A more professional word than oozing, which is very descriptive. Coming out, yes, but I want more professional rows, not coming out. Yes, Christine got it. And pus discharging, that's the word. So if you want to sound like a, if you want to demonstrate your expertise and professionalism, you need to use the um, formal expression. Oozing out is too descriptive, too graphic. Faust writes gushing out. Can you imagine like a fountain? Gushing is too strong as well. Okay. And coming out is also a little bit, um, it's not quite precise enough. So having good vocabulary is really helpful. Okay, we've got one more for pharmacy here. Today, Mr. Naudi was presented at our pharmacy with a new script in which a slow-release Dybex was prescribed. Hmm. This medication is, okay, temporary out of stock from the manufacturer and not available until middle. Okay. There's a little one there. And this is a problem word. I'll just highlight them for you to look at. Um, yeah, was presented is wrong. That means someone presented him. So we can't really do that. Um, and this in is a bit funny. Okay. Yeah, exactly, Baba. Was presented by who? It's not mentioned. I think my got it right. Who I would, I like has, who has presented at our pharmacy or, or even who presented at our pharmacy. That's how we fix that one. And the has is optional. You could use simple past. So you can use simple past or present perfect. They're both um, options. Who has presented at our pharmacy with a new script. Now, in which is not right. In which is not right. Yep. Not, can you give me a different preposition? No, not on which. Keep trying, everyone. Someone's already corrected the middle of. That's right. The middle of. We'll do that one ahead. Of which, no, Yukiko, well done. F at our pharmacy, it should be for which, because it's for the script. The Diabex 500 milligram was for the script. For which a slow release Diabex 5 was prescribed. Um, okay. Otherwise, quite good. And the other one, and writing's got it, um, temporarily. Temporarily, use the adverb. It is temporarily out of stock. So the medication is temporarily out of stock from the manufacturer and not available until the middle. Now we need the middle of 2020 because it's a nominalized structure, the middle of 2020. Yes, Yukiko, that looks good. Okay. All right, so that's just a few body paragraph um, corrections there, everyone. Let's move on to the conclusion, everyone. The conclusion. Now, we've got a few funny ones here. The first one here, um, in view of the above, please do not hesitate to contact me should you have any queries. 
I just want you to think about this. Just think about this. Does it make sense to you? Think about that one. And just remember when you're, while you're thinking about that, when you're writing your letter, you know, the conclusion is probably the easiest sentence to write, but don't let your guard down. Don't let your guard down. Stay focused because you don't want to make a careless error in the conclusion, which could undo all your hard work in, in your introduction and body paragraphs. Yes, W.O. and Sony don't like this. I agree. In view of the above. Now, remember, if you use in view of the above, you can say, in view of the above, I would appreciate your urgent attention to his condition. In other words, in view of means based on the above. So it needs to be followed by an action, something you want the reader to do. But this doesn't have an action. So just remove it. So someone's trying to use the phrase, but it doesn't really work. So just remove it. Please do not hesitate to contact me. Contact me should you have any queries is correct. With regards, um, it's not really an email. So I would just stick, my advice is stick to the standard, yours sincerely. With regards, a little bit more for emails, everyone. Um, based on the above, Jaron would not work here. Based on the above, it's the same. If you're going to say based on the above, um, I would um, appreciate your urgent attention. Remember, those phrases need to be followed by actions. Just remember that. The problem with this is it's a hard one, but there's no action. So if I just rephrase that, everyone, a few people are a bit confused. In, it is a confusing point. In view of the above, I would appreciate your urgent attention to Mr. Zed's um, condition. And then it makes sense because you've, it's an action. The action is urgent attention. That's why. And you've mentioned the urgency, obviously, earlier. Um, but this one, it just doesn't make, it's, it's just unnecessary. Okay. Um, Kang says, do we need to put name after doctor? Uh, if, if you wish, if you wish. In this case, we just put emergency doctor. Um, but yes, if you wish, you can do that. Uh, or you can just put Dr. X, or you can just put profession, physiotherapist. It's not an essential requirement. But if you want to put your name and sign it, that's fine as well. Okay, let's try this physio one. Thomas would benefit from continuous physiotherapy training. Please do not hesitate to contact me. That's, is it training? Do you train physiotherapy? What do you think? Um, while I'm waiting for that answer, Bomb says, what's the difference between sincerely and faithfully? Well, number one, this is a mistake. I think, you know, it's got to be yours sincerely. Yours sincerely. Now, you can use faithfully. Um, and I believe in America, uh, they'll also accept yours truly. So not too much difference. Sincerely is a little bit more business orientated, but commonly used in um, medical writing. Faithfully, you can use as well. It's um, uh, commonly accepted. Um, and you could even use yours truly. I've seen the, that in a lot of American uh, referral letters. So they're all pretty much interchangeable. Yes, I, I'm getting some corrections there. Would benefit from, con yeah, continuous sounds funny. I agree with you. Continuous, I probably prefer ongoing. 
sounds a little bit better. Continuous, like it never stops. Ongoing physiotherapy. Yeah, I agree. We're going to put something different. We'll probably put sessions. That sounds good. And we don't need this comma, everyone. Yeah, just physiotherapy. Exactly, Uskun. Please do not hesitate to contact me should you need further information. So remember, if you start with the independent clause, which we are here, you don't need a comma. Use a comma when you start with the independent clause. If we reverse the order, should you need further information, comma, do not hesitate to contact me. So that's the grammar rule there with comma usage. Ah, thank you. Someone spotted that. Yes, Thomas would be benefit. No, Thomas would. Let's just make that clear. We don't need that B. Thomas would benefit from, not the passive there. All right. All right. A lot of people spotted that. Well done. Yours. And um, nursing. Mr. Hutt has an appointment with eye surgeon on 11.620. A few errors here, everyone. Mr. Hutt has an appointment with eye surgeon on this date at 11 and at 10. His brother will transport him to the doctor's surgery. If you could discharge the patient from your care prior to the time. Hmm. Yours, that's a good ending. Um, that's good, Bomithi. Okay, so this one, we don't need a comma, do we? Remove the comma. Remember, no comma between the subject and the verb. Mr. Hutt, had, it breaks the flow. Mr. Hutt has an appointment with something. Yeah, some sort of article here. I would say with, um, with the eye surgeon, with his eye surgeon, I'm presuming it's a known surgeon. So I'd say with the eye surgeon or with his eye surgeon, one of those, and possible Dina as well, but I'm assuming it's a known surgeon. Um, but you could put Anne. I, it just depends on the context of the letter. We'll call them all acceptable. If it's a no and I surgeon, use the or his, the pronoun. If it's unknown, then you can use an. So it depends on the context. And so this is good at 11 a.m. Okay, I'll probably go full stop here. I might just go, it's getting a bit wordy. Please note. At 10 a.m., his brother will transport him to the doctor's surgery. And now this one's a bit funny, everyone. If you could, um, if you could discharge the patient from your care prior to the time, that is a sentence fragment, everyone. It's only half a sentence. It's an independent clause. It's missing the dependent clause. So we call that a sentence fragment. Um, so I would say, please note, please note, his brother will transport him to the hospital. Um, and I would just rewrite that and just say, and he needs to be, just make it one sentence, to be discharged um, prior to that. <clears throat> Prior to that time, that'll fix it up. Okay, so just a few sentence structure issues there, everyone. All right, last one, everyone. Oh, no, we've got two more. Um, I would really appreciate it if you could examine and treat this patient as you feel appropriate. Please contact me if you require any information. This is a dentistry one. I would really appreciate it. Is that formal or informal? Can you give me a better word? Um, 
please contact me if you require any information. We need something here. We need something there. Yes, really is informal. So use greatly. Don't avoid the informal language. I would greatly appreciate it if you could examine and treat this patient as you feel appropriate. That's much better. Everyone's got that highly. Yeah, Manu, highly not too bad. But I think highly is just a little bit overly um, formal there. But it's possible. Um, I prefer greatly myself. Um, please contact me if you require any, yeah, not any information because you've already given information. So you need to contextually make that clear if you require any further information. All right, and the last one, I hope this information would be helpful. Please feel free to contact me if you have any question. Wow, that's not so good either, is it? That's not so good. I hope this information would be helpful. It, that's, um, we have to be more direct, don't we? Simply say, I hope this information is helpful. Be direct because you've already given it, is helpful. And if you have any further, yep. Yeah. And then I would go full stop, because it's a, otherwise it's like a comma splice. Um, I hope this information is helpful, full stop. Can't add a clause with a comma alone. That's called the comma splice. You must use a full stop. Please feel free to contact me if you have any question. Hmm, use plural. A lot of people are saying that. Questions or queries is probably even better. Put in brackets. I'm, I like queries, a bit more standard, but questions is okay. Okay. All right, and we're done, everyone. So that's just a quick um, run through of some common introduction, body paragraph, and conclusion errors. Now, we've covered five professions today, um, but if you are not one of these professions, remember at OET Online, we have um, uh, online courses for all 12 professions tested by the OET Center. So do check us out. Regardless of your profession, we have a course for you. Um, and we run grammar classes every Monday night, everyone. Every Monday night, we have live grammar classes. So if you are interested, if you haven't in, enrolled in one of our courses, check them out. Um, really good practice for everyone. And just a couple more things to talk about, everyone. Um, great news. I wanted to say a congratulations to Rana. There hasn't been many exams recently because of all the COVID-19, but one of our lovely students, Rana, um, look at these scores, everyone. Um, she worked so hard. She got 390 in listening, 420 in reading, 370 writing, 380 for speaking. What an effort. And that's just hard work, everyone. We looked at her profile and she just worked very, very hard. That's how you get these scores. And she said she set the exam on June 13. And she's grateful to um, her tutors, myself, Gavin and Laura. And they guided and taught me um, how to keep focusing to find the right answer and yet not miss the time. So time management. Her greatest fear was writing, but um, I was able to help her. She was grateful um, that she could get through the exam. We love these stories. Um, and she highly recommends us. So you go, Rana, and best of luck with your career. Now, for the rest of you, um, keep working hard as well, um, and you'll get a great result like that. Now, a couple of things. If you want to do a writing course, this is our course spotlight. 
um, just a couple of great classes we run. We run a virtual writing class plus online grammar review. Now that's an excellent course if writing is your nemesis, your weak point, your enemy. You get that unlimited live classes for six months, eight writing correction, all your skill building material, the grammar lectures, grammar vocabulary clinic, and so on. And it doesn't matter what your profession, you can go for that. Or you've got a, um, you're in a bit of a hurry or, or you just want to look at analyzing case notes, go to the virtual writing class. And that has the unlimited live classes for your profession. Now, remember, we have writing classes for doctors only, writing classes for nurses only, writing classes for allied professions all together. So we've got you covered. A couple of great options there. And check it all out on the website, everyone. Check it all out on the website oetonline.net.au and, and look for the writing options. Um, but we've designed these courses to ensure success, everyone. Last thing to say, everyone, breaking news. Is there anyone here from the US in the audience? Probably the US people are sleeping right now. But um, I'm sure many of you seen on the OET Center website, uh, the doctors um, now for USA 2020 registration, it's open. So if you're from the US and you're watching this video, come to oetonline.net.au. Uh, here's your checklist. Study with OET Online, step one. Step two, pass your exam. Step three, gain your ECFMG accreditation. And then finally, start working as a medical doctor in the USA. We'll be very happy to help you. Um, all right, now, ah, Salish is applying for ECFMG. Wonderful, Salish. Um, we'll be happy to help you on your journey. WA says you got an email regarding this. Very tempting, very tempting, wonderful. Come and join us. Hannah writes, instead of the U smile, exactly, this replacing the U smile, US, uh, USMLE, the clinical communication test. Oh, look, it's great about OET, everyone. It's just globally recognized. And congratulations to the OET Center for getting this through as well. Um, so it doesn't matter. This is OET is your passport to work in any country. You won't have to take multiple tests. So that's wonderful. All right, everyone. And uh, now one, look, one thing I often get asked, look at that, these access periods, look, six months, four months, but I only have to take, I'm taking my exam next month. Can I complete it? Absolutely. That access duration is your backup. If you didn't get through first time, you would still be able to access it or uh, if you've got a longer term plan. So that's just a general access period that we give, but these courses can be completed very rapidly if needed. All right. Osgren says, what's the success ratio for OET among participants? I did see a survey there and it goes, um, it depends on the pro profession, Osgren. I do remember reading doctors and dentists were up around 50% success rate, could be higher now. That's a little bit of an old stat. What I would tell you is OET is a tough exam, like any language exam, but because it's in your professional area, that gives you a big, big advantage and it does prepare you for your workplace. Hannah says five, eight writings in five weeks is possible. Absolutely, honey. We have our um, team of teachers waiting and ready to help you. All right, everyone, I've run out of time. and You've got things to do. Study hard, everyone, and um, look forward to seeing you in the next Prep Hour. We'll be back in two weeks for a speaking session. So see you then. Bye for now.